today on Divorce Court. Today's couple is living in an animal house, and I'm not talking about that movie. When he agreed to rescue a puppy, he had no idea he'd soon have over a dozen more furry mouths to feed. Now, facing financial and crowd control issues, they're fighting like cats and dogs. And now they're asking me to play peacemaker. Divorce Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Greg Brader and Brittany Given. The two of you, you're 31, you're 28, you're engaged, but you're not quite sure whether or not you should make it to the altar, so you've come to me on a before your vows. Uh, I'm gonna start with you, Mr. Brader. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and, and, and what's standing in between you and the altar? Well, I met Brittany about three years ago. Um, we actually met through a mutual friend. Uh, he ended up tricking me into going out on a date with her. Uh, at first, I was against it, but uh, then we finally actually went out on a date, and ever since then, we've been inseparable. It just seems uh, that with all the extra stresses that's been added into our relationship with the amount of animals that we have. Well, how many animals do you have? Well, we have a total of 15. We have eight dogs. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We have eight dogs, two cats, two ferrets, and two turtles, and also a hamster. <laughs> now, now, who's bringing all these animals in? Is it you or her? Well, we both we both really love animals. So initially, uh -huh. at first, we she had one dog, uh, and then after a couple of months, we got another dog, and then after a little bit later, we got a cat, and then so on and so forth, and and now we have all of all of our animals. Fifteen animals. Yes, ma'am. That's a lot of animals. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of lot of like dog food, cat food, litter. Yes, ma'am. We actually brought a vet video. Vet bills. Yes, ma'am. We actually brought a video in to show you as well. well let me see that. Dixie, Peyton, Ganja, Ray Ray, Lucy, Lonnie. Our two ferrets, our dwarf hamster, Cosmo and Mio. Do y'all live on a farm? <laughs> no, no ma'am, but, but we actually just got a house uh, recently in, in North Carolina. How that, big is it? How many square feet? Well, the house alone is only about eight to 900 square feet, so it's, it's fairly small. But we mainly moved there because it has a lot of land, so it has a great potential to be able to house all the animals that we want. But do you but mostly keep them inside? We mostly keep our, our, uh, our dogs and, and most of the animals inside, but she also wants to get a donkey, uh, some pigs, and we eventually, she wants me to get an uh, exotic pet license to be able to carry a sloth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Miss Gibbon, what you want a sloth for? Uh, I've always wanted a sloth, and we have the acreage to do it, and he was on board until... He just doesn't want to go out and do the work to have them all outside instead of in the house. And so you, know, you keep and... them in 900 square feet. Yeah. Yes, Who does the majority of the pet care? I do. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of poop to pick up. <laughs> that's a lot of vet trips. Mm -hmm. You're okay with all of that? I, I am. I mean, I wish that they could go outside. We have a small fenced-in yard, and we have three acres. Well, we what's have keeping them from going outside? Greg going out and doing the work that he says he's going to do. What, does he need to build things. some dog houses? Yeah, we, we were going to have kennels and have our whole property fenced in. Can you afford all of these people? No, we cannot. Because <laughs> they're expensive. Uh-huh. Very. I mean, you know, had you thought about that? We did, and uh, I mean, we're we're trying. You know, we we care about them a lot. To you know, we don't want to get rid of them. Are they in good shape? They're in yes. great shape. Everybody great. taking care yeah. of. Everybody's taking care of. They're spayed, it, neutered, all shots. They got all their shots. All, the shots all of that. But we Every, said we yeah. were gonna stop at six, and he kept bringing them home. So. Uh, well, you know, we have a we have. A Is huge the house, house clean? The house is clean. Mm -hmm. uh, their cages are getting There's dirty. There's no extra stuff on the ground that I don't, you know. No, man. I mean, it's not it, cool. When, when we come home from work, uh, it tends to get, you know, you tend to see some messes, but it gets cleaned up pretty, pretty immediately. But are the house broken, everybody? Uh, uh -huh. For the most part. Can I make a plea on behalf of the sloth? <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Please do. Don't buy an exotic animal. 
if you can't bring them into the environment they've come from, and they ain't got no company. Mm -hmm. You know, you bring a sloth that he got no sloth buddies, <laughs> ain't got no sloth woman. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's hard. You know what I'm saying? They, they like being with, the, you know, they're exotic for a reason. Dogs and cats have been bred to be around us, but, you know, let the sloth be free. You know? Yeah. <laughs> he wants to be in his tree, be all slow. He don't want to talk to the dog. Well, we do have a bamboo forest that we live next, so we were going to build a cage around the bamboo forest. Yeah, he don't, have... don't, 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 don't put, put, no, leave the sloth be. Yeah. Okay. All righty. <laughs> you say she doesn't take care of them well enough to give you a good life. What do you mean by that? Well, a lot of times when I come home from work or something or we get home from the store, uh, the, some of the dogs are out of their cages and some are in. So um, a lot of times there will be a mess on the floor from them either chewing something up or for them going to the bathroom. Well, when we come in the house, she tends to just walk straight over it and continue to go about her daily activities. So then I'll have to come back and clean up the mess, fix anything that's broken, clean up any, uh, any kind of um, issues. issues that are that have been left are on the floor. The and uh, so, so it gets pretty tough. And, and after I work so long, you know, throughout the day, I have a very small window of time to be able to take for myself. And, you know, that's when, uh, that's when I have to take care of the animals as well. Do you agree with his contention that you were a little light on, on, on the pet care, or do you think he's a little light on the pet care? I think he's a little light as well. I'm the one that feeds them every, di every single night um, and day um, when... Uh, when I get home from work, like I, that's what I I go straight to feed all the animals. Mm -hmm. like, he ha he never he never feeds them. I'm always the one that, and if if he, he does feed them, if he never feeds them as much as they need or not feeding them the right stuff mm -hmm. and doing it. He's just mm -hmm. kind of casually passing mm -hmm. out food mm -hmm. uh, but, amongst but, the masses. But something with that though, when she does feed the animals. Uh, she doesn't watch them after she feeds them. So she gives them the food and then she'll go off in the living room and either watch TV or play on her phone. So what ends up happening is, is some of the dogs end up eating all their food and then going to another dog's bowl. And, and eating all that dog's food. food. Well, why aren't you watching them? I'm feeding the rest of the animals. I got you. I got you. I understand what's going on. I understand that you two also have financial issues, which is not a surprise. So let's yeah. talk about the financial troubles that you're having. And we don't have the entertainment up there. $3,260 a month. And how much do you guys bring in total together? 34. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, y'all broke. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me what he did with the video games when the car insurance was due. <laughs> well, before me and him met, um, I did get a DUI, and I'm paying for those consequences now. I have to get an SR-22 um, right. insurance, and, which is around 250 plus I have to pay for insurance as well for three years straight. Now, um, I was, it was the day that it was due. I cannot be late, and I asked him to go pay it and instead he bought Xbox games, which now I have to start from the very beginning of three oh, years. Oh, man, did you, did you blow that for her for an Xbox game? I, I did, but um, that was not the intention at the time. I, it, it really had slipped my mind, and I was coming home from work, and I was just thinking about this game so much, so I decided to stop and buy it. Holy Subsequ moly. Yeah, subsequently, it ended up uh, costing us the insurance. I was and... almost done, three years. Oh, man. Yeah. I understand you have something to show me that gives me an idea of the, the nature of the financial issues mm -hmm. that you have. Yes. So let's take a look at that. Mortgage, six, uh, that's a reasonable mortgage. Mm -hmm. Utilities, phone, car payment, car insurance, food, credit cards, student loans, cigarettes, pet supply, and we don't have the entertainment up there. $3,260 a month? Yes. And how much do you guys bring in total together? 34. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, y'all broke. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you intend to do about the nature of your brokenness? Uh, more income. That's just pretty much been the nature of the beast so far. I'll, I'll end up getting multiple jobs. Uh, one time, actually, uh, I got laid off from a job because uh, 
because the place shut down. So I ended up picking up side jobs um, from Craigslist. I well, found them. Well, she, yeah, she found them uh -huh. online for me. So I would go off to about three jobs a day. And the money was great. It was starting to roll in. Everything was good. I was working, you know, some pretty decent hours, and, and it wasn't that bad. But then I started noticing that she would overbook me as far as scheduling. She would schedule me about 15 jobs a day. Well, I can't work 15 jobs a day, so I'd have to pick the ones that would pay the most that I could be able to do the most. What are you doing to bring in extra income? Uh, well, I recently just got my insurance license, so and we both knew it was going to be a build to my career. And he's, he, he knew that when we got into it. So y'all working on it? Mm hmm Okay. Here's another thing that you're not working on, and I understand it's a real problem. You, Mr. Brader, want to have children, and Ms. Given, you don't want to, and it is a huge issue that faces any couple that's engaged. So I want to talk about that next. But even if he does, he does want kids, it's not like we have sex to even try to have kids anyways. She just put your business yeah. right out there. <laughs> Would you keep getting more pets if your finances were tight? Tell us what you think at Divorce Court. Mr. Brader, you want to have children. Yes, ma'am. And you two have talked about it. Yes, ma'am, multiple times. And can I say this? I am so glad that you had enough sense to talk about having children before you just made one. <laughs> you know what I mean? You talk about it. Is it the right time? Is it what you want? I encourage more people to follow suit. Having said that, I, I can understand completely you wanting children. Why doesn't Miss Ms. Given want children? Do you know? I, I have a I have a slight idea, um, but we she has a couple of medical issues. But at the same time, and. In the beginning of our relationship, neither one of us really wanted to have children. It was right. never a huge topic in, the, in, our, con in our daily conversation. Um, but as I get older and I'm playing with my niece and nephew and I play with my friends' kids, mm -hmm. I see the likeness between the parents and the children, mm -hmm. and I just feel like one day, you know, having a daughter or a son, you know, around the house, that would be just, uh, just, that would just be amazing. Ms. Yeah. Ms. Given, do you not want to have children? And, and, and I'll say this, too. Women are not obligated to procreate just because we're women. Mm -hmm. It's a decision that you can make. Mm -hmm. And because you don't have children doesn't make you any less of a woman, just like if you don't have children doesn't make a man any less of a man. Having said that, do you not want to have children? It's not that I don't. Um, I have a lot of cysts on my ovaries, and I've had four miscarriages in the past. Um, one was nine weeks old, and I was excited, you know, about it, and I lost it. So I feel that, like, even if we try and I can't have it, it'll put a damper more on our relationship, and I don't want to th go through that heartbreak again. Yeah, it's a tough thing to face. Mm -hmm. Have you seen any specialists about the I cysts on your ovaries and how fertility might be affected and the things you could do to circumvent it? I have a, over a 90% chance I can't have kids. 90% chance that you can't? I cannot have kids. They can't even see my left ovary because of all the scar tissue. But there's still 10% that she can. Do you understand the level of devastation that occurs to a woman to a miscarriage? Absolutely. Do, do you? I can't because I'm not a woman. Right, right, right. And, and it's not just I lost the potential for a baby. It's, there's a hormonal situation that's good. Your body, the body for a while doesn't know if it's pregnant or not, so it's just blasting her with these hormones, this hormone, and then they're dumping, and then they're blasting, and they're dumping, and on the top of that, you've got the grieving process for a... It, it's a whole kettle of fish that, that is difficult to understand, even for a woman who hasn't been through one, because I had a, a, a relative who was, and she really explained to me the nature of, of the problem. Let me ask you this. Does it have to be one you produce? No. A lot of little babies out there. Well, I don't know, but there's a lot of them. <laughs> well, I think there are. I think maybe you have to go, you, have, you might have to go transracial yeah. because, you know. But even if he does, he does want kids, it's not like we have sex to even try to have kids anyways. She just put your business yeah. right out there. <laughs> she just, just, right. just, just, just threw it at her. You're not getting enough? No, I even I've I've cooked naked for him. I've I've been on, I, I, I've I've been on my knees when he got out of the shower, ready for him, and he just walked right past me. Well, that was so a little much like... more than I needed. No, that was a little more. 
more, more, more than I need. Mr. Brader, yes, now I never make a man defend his lack of love. <laughs> but do you want to address her concerns in the area of intimacy? The only thing I have to say about that is if I'm working 17 to 20 hours and I come home, I'm exhausted, and then I still have to take more time to help with the animals. And then the next day, I have to do it all over again. But right. he has time to lay in bed and smoke weed. <laughs> well, that's less strenuous, I must say. <laughs> that, that's true. Right? I mean, there's a whole lot less you got to do. It's a little bit well, more relaxing. Well, I take that stress away from me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. Uh, I have a few recommendations that I would like to share. What would you do if having kids naturally with your partner was a long shot? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. A, I like you people. <laughs> Intelligent, mature, talk about children, don't just go out having them willy-nilly. I mean, it's just, uh, now, the thing that I want to talk to you about, no outside, babies nowhere, not, not, you know what I mean? That is just so cool. Because I don't get that in here very often. So I just want to say that I've enjoyed that. I want to talk to you about what you want now and what you want tomorrow. My parents only talked to me about what you wanted tomorrow and how, what you had to do to get it now. They never talked to me about what I wanted right then. Because they weren't interested. They wanted me to do right then what was going to get me what I wanted tomorrow. And look what happened. I'm the family failure. My sister's a neurologist. All I'm saying to you is this. Every time you see a cute dog, you're going to want him right now. But what you want tomorrow is some more money in the bank. So you got to leave the dog where it is, or the cat, or the ferret. Don't get no sloth. No donkey. <laughs> you know, what you want right now is all of that love and fun, but what you want later on is the possibility of having a baby, adoption. If you think those animals are expensive, wait till you have a baby. Oh, those right. things will knock the economic life out of you. <laughs> <laughs> so what you want right now is to cut down on the animals, get Get, get right on the money. If your money's getting better, you've done educationally, so it's gonna get better, so he can cut back hour on his hours so he can get back with the love. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm working on everybody's behalf. <laughs> <laughs> Think about adoption. It's always a way to get what you want some other way. Make sure, talk to him about what it was like. It might be good for you, I mean, with the miscarriages. Mm -hmm. It might be good, it might be relief for you, and a better understanding for him, so that you can start looking at other options, if that is indeed the way you guys want to go. But I think you're a great couple. I think Thanks. you got a great future. I think you got to make a little adjustment here, a little adjustment there, and then you need to take this woman and walk her right on down the aisle. This matter is adjourned. Well, when would you like to walk for this young lady? We are actually, uh, we're getting married in Ireland on October 18th. Oh, wow. Yes. This October? This October. That's amazing. Thank Congratulations. You. I will, I, uh, are we invited? Uh, sure. Yeah, y'all yeah. coming? We, yeah. we, need, we need a couple witnesses. So oh, I'm, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> Ireland, it sounds good to me. I wish you guys the best. Congratulations. Thank you.